Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on this pale blue dot that we all live on. My name is Adamantium and this is AAU TZM Podcast. Just for those of you who uh, who know that I'm going to make the usual announcement, uh, <laughs> uh, for those of you who are listening to this on YouTube, my podcast also exists on TalkShoe.com. Down below in the video description, you'll find the link to it. There you can listen to and download the uh, the full MP3 files completely for free because I never charge for any of this kind of stuff. Um, but those of you who wanted to do that there and uh, you know didn't want to like sit in front of YouTube videos and just listen look at the same image but listen to both of us chat um but you can do that there uh the usual plug is uh, for the zeitgeist movement defined uh for those of you who want to know what this is it's basically the canonical text as it were that describes in a very dense but also as succinct as possible manner exactly what the zeitgeist movement advocates you can find uh, you can find how you can get hold of it on uh, www.thezeitgeistmovement.com forward slash orientation, and there you can find how you can down, um, download it as a PDF for free. Um, and if you want a, uh, an, a an actual physical uh, paperback version, you can order it for a very reasonable price, I think, on Amazon.com and Lulu.com. But on the uh, on the link. Uh, that I just gave you, you can find all the means to find it there. There's that. Um, another per- a uh, personal announcement for the uh, for the short film trilogy that I'm almost about to uh, to conclude and release uh, is uh, the title of it is Chapter Three Threshold. Uh, the principal photography has uh, has all been done. It's all been filmed. Um, I've done most of the. I've done all the video editing. And, uh, and nearly all of the audio editing is just a matter of sorting out a few more sound effects, uh, writing, composing and recording the, uh, the actual background score for it, and also collaborating with a vocalist who I will, uh, who I will announce now because I've been holding this, uh, this back for too long. It's, uh, it's a girl known as, uh, Sheena Bratz, and, uh, you can find her on uh, on um, I think it's uh, on a Facebook music page or SoundCloud or one of those. But if you uh, but if you look for her there, she's uh, she's going to be doing the uh, the vocal harmonies with me on uh, the on the title track for uh, for Threshold. So I'm you know I'm just because I'm not really a musician. You know I'm not well I'm kind of a musician but not a, not an extremely accomplished one. I'm not a you know I'm not a uh, virtuoso or whatever. Well, I'm not a maestro. I'm no maestro, um, but anyway, I'm, wor- I'm working towards that, you know. Um, so that will be out as soon as I possibly can. Uh, just one more announcement uh, for those of you who are very much interested in uh, socially conscious music, or artwork, or poetry, or comedy, or you know, short films, or whatever. When it comes to social change, there is a festival coming up known as the Zeitgeist Media Festival. If you go to www.zeitgeistmediafestival.org, that's the official website for the the idea of the festival. Um, The the main one is going to be in Los Angeles, uh, in fact, on the uh, 4th of October, which is tomorrow uh, from where when this podcast was being recorded. Um, There's going to be a live, uh, live stream of the official L.A. event, um, in addition to probably hundreds, hopefully thousands of uh, sympathetic events across the world, all doing, uh, you know, their own sort of thing to bring socially conscious uh, artists together and really celebrate the uh, the idea of social change and the need to move out of the current paradigm. Uh, I myself am going to be hosting uh, my own event, hopefully, uh, in Maidstone. Uh, that's probably, that's going to be sometime between now and Christmas. So, uh, so if you are in the, uh, in the Kent area and, uh, and you are a socially conscious, uh, artist and you want to have your, have your work showcased, as it were, in this big celebration of social change, then, uh, get in touch with me. Uh, I've got, um, I've got information about, um, the, uh, the event that I want to host on the uh, Facebook group for the uh, Zeitgeist Movement Maidstone chapter, 
page. I'm sorry if that this is so long winded, guys, because <laughs> just I'm doing most of this stuff myself. But uh, but yeah, go um, look for the Zeitgeist Movement Maidstone chapter on Facebook, and uh, you will find um, all the updates that I will put about that on there. Now. It is my unfortunate task to inform you that Cutting Room Floor Studios has completely disappeared. They, they've, they've vanished. And as, su- and as such, no longer exists to sponsor this podcast. Uh, I'm not entirely sure of all the details, but the last I heard, uh, the FBI was after them. Uh, something about betraying a contract through negligence. You know, they were given given all this governmental funding and they blew most of it on coke and hookers. And as such, you know, the beheading videos they produced were of absolute laughable quality that they can't actually convince anyone. Um, This might be part of the reason why people, at at least in the UK now, are now not urged to share the beheading videos on social networks because they can be prosecuted and, you know, charged under a certain vague piece of anti and anti-terrorism legislation uh but the implication seems to be uh that we shouldn't review uh the only video evidence of a crime and just take their word for it that it actually happened but anyway there's that uh so this podcast is brought to you by hear no evil see no evil what this is is uh, kind of like the blinders that horses have put on them but it's sort of like a multi-dimensional multi-functional device and uh, it's worn by humans Uh, Its function is to visually and auditorially block out any stimulus that can prove to be detrimental to the wearer's buying habits. Okay. Field tests have shown uh, that when this headset is worn down uh, down the high street, for example, a whole new level of functions open up. Now, your attention is drawn specifically to lovely consumer goods, you know, regardless if you need them or not. Uh, and it automatically screens out all contrary influences and evidence. So this, ladies and gents, is actually looking to be quite a good uh, consumer buy and uh, something that can really keep the economy going. Uh, so, ladies and gents, please take advantage of this limited time offer where headsets are going uh, for buy one, get one free. Uh, this way, uh, when you're walking down the high street with your dumbed down spouse, you can both enjoy being swept along in the shopping experience. OK, so please visit www.hnesne.com forward slash A-A-U-T-Z-M. Enter the code name dumb funk. Uh, that's spelled D-U-M-B-F-U-C-K, to take advantage of this wonderful offer. Uh, This podcast is also brought to you by Russell Brand. Yep, Uh, he sends me envelopes of cash in wet plastic bags through the letterbox, which I have to dry on the radiator, but why bite the hand that feeds? Uh, He's agreed to co-fund this podcast until we can spare at least 10 minutes on this show with me to talk about science and sustainability. So... Cheers, Russell. Uh, This podcast is also brought to you by Green Party candidate Caroline Lucas. Uh, You know, it's weird. When I started this podcast over four years ago, I never thought that I would receive political funding. But it's true. Uh, I received sporadic funds from her via Carrier Pigeon. Um, I say sporadic uh, because some of the payments don't actually make it to me. Uh, There's a guy who lives a couple of doors down from me, and I don't think his brain is firing on all cylinders because he loves shooting things. And to make matters worse, he suffers a phobia of pigeons. So as they fly over his garden, he shoots them down and uh, I can never recover the corpse to get my money. So but Caroline is aware of this and he sends me she sends me larger sums. And uh, sometimes the pigeon is wearing Kevlar, you know, uh, it's just like a nitty bitty Kevlar vest. For the, for the pigeon, but it's pretty cool. But that said, uh, she's agreed to co-fund this podcast until she can spare at least 10 minutes to talk mm-hmm. uh, to come onto this show and talk about science and sustainability when applied to science, society and our own environment. But anyway, there's enough for the uh, announcements that I've spent way too much time on. Um, as you can see from the title of this podcast, uh, this is a, a discussion about uh, the issue of violence with my good friend Michael Quinn. So, Michael, if you'd like to say hello. Hi, guys. Fantastic. So, 
this is one thing that I do with uh, with all the people that come on my podcast. So uh, so you're the new victim in this uh, <laughs> is that uh, you have to spill the beans to the audience as to uh, how you first came about, uh, you know, the train of thought of the zeitgeist movement. And, uh, you know, how was uh, how how did that affect a sort of tipping point in uh, in your life to actually become socially conscious? Uh, first, I'd like to uh, say is uh, the tipping point for me was actually throughout my life, bits and pieces, but it, I didn't really think about it until just recently, uh, specifically about uh, money and religion, which I had a problem with for a long time. But uh, uh, with the money, back when I was in sixth grade, uh, a friend of mine uh, was going to lend me a dollar, one dollar, but he wanted me to pay interest of 10 cents every day after the day I borrowed. If I didn't pay him back <laughs> that day, I'm not I, like, I was like, what? Why would I, why, why would I pay more than what I owe you? Then he would be owing me money, you know, if I, if I have to pay interest. It's like, it's like now he's the borrower at, beyond the dollar I owe him, you know? Mm. Um, then with religion, uh, my, my, my father was, is a Catholic and for a lot of years, you know, I was like gullible. So I kind of played him for a while, but when I, whenever I would pray for the things that I wanted, I, I noticed I never got it. So mm. that started to shake my my belief in religion or God, I should say. Then, as time went on, I started to notice there was something fishy with with religion. Now, now don't get me wrong; there are people who believe in God that are really cool people that are mm. are some nice friends of mine. But for me, I kind of lost my religion. It. Oh, Part of it is thanks to my mother because she kept me from accept face value and started to help me question things. So hmm. I pretty much now question everything. The other thing that helped too was um, I came across a book called uh, Mind Control by an author named Dr. Ha Ha Lung, which is really a cover name, one of three he has. I don't know what his real name or his face, which was frustrating. But um, I found this in the martial arts section because I was I was in the martial arts for a while, and uh, with this, I I came across George Carlin's uh, uh, the, the Dirty Words You Can't Say on TV from yeah. his first HBO special. And That's one of my and, favorite and, routines. <laughs> yeah, um, which ironically, the next uh, his third special at the end, he actually named every single word that you can't see on. But yeah, um, but uh, I it took me a year, but I, I I was desperately trying to find a picture of this guy. I bought many of his books. I, I read like half of them. I still have them, but um, I could not for the life of me find this guy's face or some some kind of picture of him or his real name. Then on YouTube, when I was looking for the video. I saw in the upper right corner where you had the related videos, the Zeitgeist the movie. And I thought, that's a cool ass name. Like, mm. wow. <laughs> so I clicked on it and I was like, well, that's interesting. I mean, like, I never had anybody, uh, like, um, really tell me anything about any of much stuff. But there, uh, was, but I, I was stonewalled, but never given like too much bullshit. So mm -hmm. it was kind of like I was like, okay, I don't really know anything. But th to watch this stuff, it was very interesting because the presentation of, of the first part of the religion was like really interesting. And then the second part, which made sense because I remember seeing uh, the two towers drop when I was in eighth grade. Like it was like what day three, and already the towers were dropping. It was like Oh, okay, but I never heard about it, so I didn't really think anything of it. And I honestly thought at first it was a movie, you yeah. know, on TV. But I, I, I didn't understand anything, anything about it because at the time I was like 
yeah, in eighth grade. And uh, what was, yeah, I'm really long-winded, I know. But um, the third part scared the crap out of me because I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. These guys want to put chips in us? Fuck that, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and then in the next related video after watching that was the <laughs> second one. I immediately went right into it. I didn't like pause or anything. So I watched both for the first time back to back. It was just, yes. <laughs> and, and what was interesting, I knew not, nothing about how money worked except my little taste from as in sixth grade. And uh, it made sense because the monetary system, the way it flows was like, wow. Uh, to, to know that this stuff can flow from nothing and goes nowhere. So it's like, okay, so we're, we're pretty much sitting in, in a cesspool of fake zeros and ones. Hey, you know, um, <laughs> the, the second part with John Perkins, now that had to be the creepiest thing I've seen up to that point when it could, I mean, no thriller movie is as creepy as what this guy was talking about. Yeah, that's true. And it was like, wow, the, the people that run this place, now that I understand that the idea of running this place was like, these people are screwed up. But this, and of course, this was long before I understood behavior, cultural influence, and so on. And uh, it was just like awesome. And then I saw the Bing Danis project. Now, mind you, during all this, I was right trying to write down all kinds of names and books. I didn't think about like just typing it in Google, you know. But uh, the Venus project really was like it uh, was interesting because it not only now, of course, at the time I wasn't thinking this, but like, ooh. The, these guys talking about big cities that are circular. And, you know, I was thinking in like kind of more like a childlike idea. And uh, I really liked how that was. So from that point forward, and mind you, this was in 2010, I saw this. And uh, from that point forward, I was just like, cool, information. But it was off and on because there was a lot of uh, – during that time, uh, there was a lot of issues at home. Uh, with like uh, uh, trying to move uh, and getting the um, and, uh, money and stuff, and I, I usually went out to find more information too. So finally, uh, I got to see the third movie after I moved out here to Nevada, which is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, I miss the city life, I'm telling you. And what's interesting is speaking of money problems and how pro- how perverse this place that the money is las vegas has to be the perfect example of this Mm -hmm. they don't even need to hear no evil see no evil headsets (laughs) they i mean and now mind you not everybody grows up that way i've met quite a few people i'm telling you man uh, if you're a tourist these people look act just like they have the headset on you know it's (laughs) it's it's really horrifying. Yeah. But yeah. All right. Yeah, so probably probably won't be a good market for Las Vegas then, but maybe other places where more people actually do this weird thing called thinking. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I again, I've met some people who think, and they actually have, uh, among many other places throughout the world, they have riots over there too, or like protests, I should say, not riots. Mm-hmm. Uh, protest over there, but I never you don't hear about it on the local news. And our local news comes from Vegas, not my, not the town I'm in, which is uh, Nye County. And I call it a ghost town for a reason. There's people here, but nobody's out <laughs> <laughs> except children. It, it's mainly families with children and senior c- c- citizens that have retired. And I'm thinking, why out here? It's peaceful and quiet. Yeah. Sure, but I'm in a desert. Like, really? It's dry as hell, and there's there. I yeah. I, I'm. I need winter. I need cold, and to really, really function. <laughs> it's hard to think when you're sweating your ass off, and and you're always thirsty. You know. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I. I mean, one of the uh, one of the jobs that I have is um, is uh, being a laborer, and I was you know doing some landscaping today and it was really sunny and i was just like oh, 
no, I can't deal with this. I need to get fitter. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, uh, I, I like the warm, but just too much of it, you know. I mean, obviously, it's the understandable, you know, human conditional barrier that, uh, you know, we find that kind of environmental conditioning, you know, detrimental to yeah. our to our Of function. course. Well, what's interesting is if you know how the cold and wind are a really tough combination. Oh, yeah. Well, well, out here, it's heat uh, on average in the summer is probably about 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. Yeah, on average. And the wind, which can be up to like 40 miles an hour, is hot. It's searing wind. It's not that cool breeze you get in the spring when it's like, ooh. <laughs> no, this it's blistering. And it's like you don't want to be outside. On top of that, when the wind does blow, there, there's a lot of dust. That Just comes sand, and scrolls yeah. through. Oh my God! Not sand. Uh, the sand is probably uh, more like Arizona. Sand, yeah. yeah, I mean it's 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 oh. it's a desert because. Well, okay. Now, let me define desert real fast. Desert is a place with little or no precipitation. So hmm. the top of Mount Mount Everest would be about a, a desert too. Although it's oh. cold, it's got no no weather. So that's a desert. So. Interesting. Matt is, yeah, uh, it's a lot of what what uh, some people here call proof dirt. It's dirt that has no new traditional value in it, and yet life strives, which is amazing. Hmm. But most of it is 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 uh, uh, people planting stuff here, but not much lasts. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, well, yeah. We've we've gone a bit on a bit of a tangent, but yeah, back to yeah. Um, you're discovering <laughs> the strength. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah, that's cool. It's uh, you know, ten- tangents are good because uh, yeah. you know it show- shows that you know, you know, we're vibing. You know, we're we're uh, we're in- we're enjoying the conversation. So I'm sure that's at least also enjoyable for the audience. But anyway. <laughs> All right. Back to how I got to this. So, um, which it- now after I moved out, well. Another way that helped me break the barrier a bit, break that uh, cultural uh, barrier, was when I found George Carlin's list of words. That's it's not the first time I heard of him, but that's the first time I heard his name was saw his stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. I originally saw him in Cha- Cha- in Shining Time Station as Mister Conductor uh, years ago, but um. Mm-hmm. I saw his his last special, uh, which came out after he died in 2009, and I was like, that that had to be the funniest thing I've heard up to that point in time. Mm. I mean, the the things he talked about and so on. Then I went into watching his other stuff, which got into all kinds of uh, how can I put it into social issues. He like, for example, we can take all the violent criminals, all the drug addicts, all the <laughs> freaks and, and, and weirdos, which are pedophiles, and, and and there's one more class. And we put them in four different states that nobody gives a crap about. And, oh, yeah. And they're <laughs> in their like own. the fences I mean, in between. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The sliding fences once a month for for seven seconds <laughs> on HBO. <laughs> like, what? That's, like, great. But, yeah. um... But yeah, I mean, because there, and he quick, quickly says we don't have time for reasoning. Which, if we outlaw religion and other stuff, it would easily solve that problem real quick. No, mm. we don't have time for rational thoughts. So here we go. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, um, I noticed that uh, that Carlin, he, I mean, his um, is sort of like more. Uh, socially conscious uh, commentary that came in with uh, you know in I think it was like the like the late nineties when he uh, started to be uh, to be more socially conscious but still but still with that wonderful edgy comedy that he did and uh, yeah. but it was a lot of anger that was in there <clears throat> but when he get um, when he got later still um, like with uh, his special uh, life is worth losing. Oh um, yes. He he still had that anger there, but he had but there was a wisdom on top of it that really sort of you know and and I think that's why the uh, the 2009 special that was uh, that was especially funny because it was it was like the most crafted that Collins' work had ever been you know. Mm-hmm. 
I I st- I think I can't really say I have a favorite because I have his entire HBO collection, mm. but uh, 1992, which is uh, his, is is the special where he started to talk about social issues instead of just doing uh, s- s- uh, skits and stuff. So this mm. was, um, uh, I think, his turning point. But from that point, I mean, oh god, the airplane, the airplane skit. That was great, but but that was his his first social his social thing, and he was also into about language communication and, and stuff like that. If if you ever mm-hmm. really listen to what he talks about, and that influenced me on language and stuff, and I was interested even more so than ever before. And that that and that can come into violence as well with the lack of communication, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh. Because of George Carlin, because of the uh, uh, the psychological warfare books, it le- including Terry Goodkind with his Sword for Truth series, which is a combination of fantasy and psychological warfare. It's really interesting. Uh, the first book is called the Wizard's First Rule, and the Wizard's First Rule is people are stupid. So I mean, it fits, you know. <laughs> yeah. But um, but uh, all this, all this was like preparing me. All the experiences I had throughout my life, all the things, I mean, I, I, I was picked on growing up a lot. I was picked on to the extent where m- most kids my, I, I, at the time would have gone nuts and started, I guess, killing everybody or something or done some crazy stuff. Me, no, I had outlets, so I wasn't, like, deprived of any way to, like, go to, to help relieve the mental stress. But uh, because of what... Anyways, because of all this stuff, it, when I came to the Zeitgeist movies, I had no resistance to anything they said. In fact, it was like, to me, something new and interesting and stimulating, and mm-hmm. I pursued it. And originally, it, it was an interest, and then over time, it became more and more. But then there was a two-year a, a two year period from 2011 after I moved out here till last year in May when I, I, was, I was at Job Corps. Um, it's a it's a school for student. Well, it's actually got campuses throughout the country here, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a free training program, but run by the government. And I have to say, the whole system, including the medical, the food, the uh, the how ha- the uh, the housing we have, is just like real life. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just crammed into a three by three block campus on an old navy air force base navy air force well, air force base that uh, uh has us all living on campus uh in dorms and stuff and and every monday through friday we go and uh go to classes if it's work and we learn and every two weeks mm-hmm. we get a very small bi-weekly pay probably about 45 dollars every two weeks because they already pay for everything else, yeah. Not much to live off of, but <laughs> but we already get free shitty ass food, shitty ass medical, and the doors weren't that bad. But um, yeah, and they were segregated male and female, which I'll get into later on about uh, how that's a bit kind of cultural bias there. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, all the experience and, – and, and that experience opened me up from being naive to a lot of things to being, whoa, what's going on here? You know, I'm now aware of things, and as time went on, I became more and more aware, and that's where I'm at today. Hmm. Yeah, because, I, mean, I mean, I've found that uh, that it's – Something like this, it's uh, it's more a, more a journey because uh, you're, you know, you're uh, you're encountering information, and it's and it's making the brain, you know, thirsty for more.